uh, greetings. Um, yep, third upload. Um, as you can see, I am pretty much shuffling uh, the deck I already mentioned and showed beforehand. I am going to do a few test hands and I hope you like um, a bit of rambling while I show like hands and stuff. Um, I'll be going over uh, the pretty much the report of how my first week with this strategy has been so far. Um, but yeah, um, let's begin. Um, for those wondering how much is the deck count, because I never said it beforehand, it's 45 cards. Um, the main reason for that is because there are a few bricks, like the adventure engine uh, requirements, as well as stuff like uh, long Castura monsters, like the rice heart I just drew in this opening hand. Um, and you kind of want a way to mitigate having seen them as well as just keep playing with your engine uh, if we look at this first hand um, there are pros and cons to this particular hand the cons is there are no engine pieces so basically you cannot like there's no way to play with the Scareclaw portion outside of just making tryhard. Um, what makes it even more awkward is that Rice Heart locks you into XYZs if you decide to summon him, special summon him, and you can only special summon him if you control a Castira monster. So this is pretty much a brick. Um, adding to that, uh, you pretty much opened three adventure cards. You don't want to open too many of them. You kind of just want to open like the openers to your engine, like this one or this one. So technically, we have two hard bricks. Um, thrust is only as good as your opponent uh, reacting to you. If your opponent reacts to you uh, uh, consecutively, this works. If not, then it kind of doesn't. Um, but yeah, uh, this is basically an adventure hand. So. I, I won't do any explanations on how this works. Um, so yesterday I went to Locals. Uh, it was a 20 and 30 man event. Uh, five rounds of Swiss. Um, and I can tell you that uh, if I bricked the same way I did just now, it was once. It was once on round four. It was against Kashtira. Uh, funnily enough, I won the die roll. Um, he did the entire Kashtira play. He put me on the mission shifter. He also um, did the Diabolos and the zone lock with the Shangri-La. Um, the way I won that game was um, a triple tactic thrust into talents, into taking his Arise Heart. And then I started grabbing back materials from the banished face down into a rice heart. And then I linked it away into try heart and then my materials went to the graveyard. Um, but yeah, that's like one of those weird things that can happen with this strategy. Um, so here's another hand. This hand is a lot better and it kind of shows you why these, these two engines are played together. So I'm just gonna play it out. Um, I'm going to start with Pressure Plant, and the off chance that Pressure Plant resolves, you add Tashtira Unicorn. The reason you add Tashtira Unicorn is, like, if, if you go first, you add Unicorn, if you go second, you add Fenrir, pretty much, uh, like that. So, you control no monsters, so you special Unicorn. Then you then you activate Water Enchantress. Why did you not activate Water Enchantress before summoning Unicorn? The reason you do it on this sequence is because if the opponent decides to Ash or like freeze your Water Enchantress, uh, Unicorn can punish them by looking at their extra deck. Uh, 
the other thing about it is uh, you can make the argument of which engine is important to start from but you always start with the Castillo engine because you because it's the one that requires you not to control monsters so you're resolving water enchantress and water enchantress will add you right of Aramis here sadly we open the faithful adventure so you're now going to plus out of right as you're supposed to that being said you're going to activate faithful adventure and upon the activation of faithful adventure you do you go then and activate right of Aramis here um, that will provide us with the adventure token um, we're going to pretend these are zones 1, 2, 3 um, there, usually there are different lines that you can do uh, depending on how, if you open faithful or not um, I'm going to show you a line as if you didn't open faithful Sadly, that means one less card in your hand, but it kind of shows you more intricacies with the deck. So our normal summon, Skirtclaw Astra, you still don't have to be faithful adventure. You link away Astra into your Lightheart. Then, now you have to be faithful adventure because you're going to chain block uh, Lightheart with faithful adventure. The reason you do that is you, you're going to prevent Aside from your Gamma, and you're going to prevent Ash Blossom hitting Lightheart. Um, those are not really popular hand thrusts, but you have to make a habit of like trying to play around those if you like while also fulfilling your engine. So, that being said, you resolve both effects. You are definitely uh, faithful shining too, so you're adding Draco back. And Scareclaw uh, Lightheart was chaining one, so you add right phobia. So one thing I like to do here, and it should be like the appropriate play, is before you activate anything else, you're going to activate Faithful Adventure to grab an adventure monster. That being said, you are going to grab Griffin Rider. Uh, upon Grand Griffin Rider, you discard Draco back. Draco back, you equip to your token, and you try to summon Griffin Rider. Um, if you noticed, one, two, three, four. This is your fifth summon, so um, you are locking yourself into already having protection against New Biro the Primal Being, while you are still like advancing your game state. Um, that being said, you're going to activate Rayphobia, taking away Rayzals. Rayzal already fulfilled its purpose of adding a cash to your monster, and you don't play Shangri La in this in, in this deck. So, uh, the added benefit of popping a card if Shangri La triggers is not gonna happen on this in this uh, with this particular deck. You're activating a printing but playing Prey Phobia. Um, there are different lines you can do here. Um, one particular line that uh, I like to do is add right card. Another line you can do that is different is that to grab Visa Star Frost. Um, I'll start with the right card line and then I'll show the Visa Star Frost line. Um, before you add with right heart, you're going to activate Kashtira Unicorn. Why do you activate Kashtira Unicorn's effect to add now and not before or after? The reason you do that is because right heart has the ability to draw a card in addition of grabbing your uh, Scare Glass Spell or Trap. So thinning your deck as much as possible uh, makes it so you can keep playing. Uh, like and probably draw into other engine pieces or miscellaneous cards. You can make the argument of maybe you want to draw into whatever you want to add with unicorn and have unicorn add another card, but and or the argument of drawing the cards that does not function with unicorn if you add whatever you want to add with unicorn. Um, but you know those are very small nuances. Um, that being said, 
unicorn's effect, you're going to grab Tashterotheosis. Tashterotheosis is added to your hand. Now, uh, since we control a Scareclaw monster and there's an empty zone under Lightheart, you're going to special summon Scareclaw Rightheart. Um, with Scareclaw Rightheart, uh, you're going to add a Scareclaw Spare Trap and then you draw one random card because you will or we control at least three defense position monsters. So we're resolving. Um, as you can see, we already have Scareclaw Twin Slot in your hand. Um, depending on what matchup you're facing or whatever priorities you have, or if you have uh, whatever board you have established, you add different layers of disruption or protection. Uh, that being said, I'm going to grab Scareclaw Arrival. Um, once the combo is finished, you'll understand why Arrival specifically and not something else like Scareclaw Splash. Um, that being said, um, you thin the deck, you draw one card. Normally I will say this is just one random card and just ignore it and just accept the plus one. But remember, cards like Kastria Theosis and, other, and cards like uh, Skirtlaw Tryhard uh, do require you to have certain pieces still in your deck. So we're going to check what card did we drew. We drew Triple Tactic Talents. Okay. That is not an engine requirement for Castor Theosis, and that is not an engine requirement for Tryhard. So we can proceed from here. That being said, you'll activate Skirtclaw Arrival, and with Skirtclaw Arrival, you're going to bring back Skirtclaw Astra. Skirtclaw Arrival goes to the graveyard. And now you have a protection from destruction for your Skirtclaw Link monster. That being said, you're going to link away Rayheart, Astra, and Lightheart into Skirtclaw, Tryheart. Um, this is very, very, very sequential, the way I'm doing all these plays. And the reason for that is because Kashtira Theosis locks you into only summoning XYZ monsters from the extra deck for the rest of this turn. Note that I mentioned for the rest of this turn and not during the turn. Uh, which is very important because it gave you permission to make Tryhard and it also gives you permission to activate Tryhard's effect after you resolve this because it only locks you from the extra deck. That being said, you're going to activate Kastria Theosis targeting Kastria Unicorn. And with that, we're going to summon Cash Tira Fenrir. Um, with Cash Tira Fenrir, we're going to add another Cash Tira monster. You are, there are different options here. You can grab another piece of another Fenrir for follow up. Um, you can grab another Cash Tira extender. The Cash Tira extenders that we have are Rice Heart and Skirtclaw Kashtira. We're going to add Rice Heart in this instance. That being said, um, you activate Kashtira Rice Heart since you control a Kashtira monster. And this also heart locks this also locks you into XYC monsters from the extra deck. That being said, you're going to activate its effect. And you're going to banish a Kashtira card. Is any Kashtira card? Uh, in this instance, we're just going to banish Fenrir. Um, now your opponent loses 3 cards from the top of their deck, and this becomes level 7. That, now what we're going to do is grab Unicorn, Fenrir, and Riceheart. And we're going to XYZ, Summon, into Kashtira Arisar. Um, now that that part is done, we're going to activate Tryhard's effect. With Tryhard's effect, you are uh, to summon a Scareclaw monster, level three, 
and you add a Scareclaw monster, for the rest of the turn, you are locked into Scareclaw summons. This is the last uh, piece that we do, because uh, it does not conflict with all the other Xeno locks that you had before, but now you're hard Xeno locked. But this is pretty much your end board. So you're adding Scareclaw Astra. And the card I will grab here are either another copy of Reichardt or Scareclaw Kashtira. <laughs> there are pros and cons to both. Um, in in the part of Reichardt is you have follow up. Uh, for more cash to, I mean, for more skirt clock cards, because I play two, I do play multiple rivals. Um, in the end, in the off chance, they actually do break their board. Um, the skirt clock cash makes it so if they take out your skirt clock monsters off the board, but I do want a destruction for twin saw, you still have it um, with. Kashtira Scare Claw. Um, because this is a quick effect, it can be summoned on either player's main phase. So, um, that's pretty much it. Um, like for this part, um, if you summarize, you have the Omni Negate from Griffin, you have Triheart that is turn your opponents into defense, and you have a Rise Heart. Um, but yeah, uh, this is pretty much something you're going to see, like with this deck. With um, so I'm going to go and retrace the steps a little bit and go back to when we had Rikphobia and Lightheart and Griffin with Unicorn. So returning these, returning this. This is still here. These two were in your hand. These were in the deck. Astra was in the graveyard. This was back in the deck. This was back in the deck. So we're back at this step. We successfully summon Super Griffin Raider as our fifth summon. You have your Rick Phobia and you have the Light Heart. Um, and you haven't triggered Unicorn yet. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to activate the Planet Planet. And with the Planet Planet, we're going to add Visa Star Frost. Um, so, what's going to be different from this point is that. Um, there's an interaction with Visa Starfrost with Lightheart it also, uh, gives you follow up in a different scenario and also gives you another form of disruption so what we're going to do is we're activating Visa Starfrost destroying the Lightheart after that is done Skirkla Lightheart activates its graveyard effect um, it, while you control Visa Starfrost you can special summon him from the graveyard uh, if you do that, um, this effect is only once per duel. Um, no other restrictions. So, you summon back Lightheart, and then with Lightheart, you're going to turn him into a second copy of Skirkla Lightheart. Skirkla Lightheart's effect to add Rickphobia is not once per turn. And you can use any Scare Claw monster or Visa Star Frost to make him, including other copies of itself. The only restriction is that you have to, it has to be from the main deck, not from the extra deck. That being said, um, we're resolving this effect and we're adding Right Phobia. Okay, so what do we do next? We're going to grab Visa Star Frost and you're going to. Synchro Summon using it and the Adventure Token. And that will summon Baron the Floor. Um, basically, Baron the Floor is going to fulfill the purpose that Griffin Raider fulfills. 
the downside of this is you lose your equip spell um, but uh, I guess an upside for it is you have other stuff that you might search uh, or have as follow-up um, which is a bit different and also it makes it so your board is less threatened by evenly match because when it comes to evenly match you are fully threatened because when you have the adventure token um, that being said you're activating unicorn With Unicorn, you're going to grab Theosis. For activating Theosis, targeting Unicorn, that's going to search summon Fenrir. And you activate the Fenrir, and the Fenrir will search you another Crash to go. Um, one, one that I like uh, adding here is Fenrir. Um, so if you noticed, you can still make a rise heart because Wandering Griffin Rider is level seven. That being said, you grab these three, and you end on a rise heart. Um, it's a way less powerful board than the previous one, but you wasted l less resources for it um so it really depends on how your hand looks like but these this is basically the lines that you should consider as options when you're making this um something very important to note and something to mention uh Castillo Arise Heart has the ability to grab anything that's banished and put it as material whenever a card is banished. That's really important because you can grab grab back Water Enchantress of the Temple. Which means if this ends up falling off and Water Enchantress is a material under a rice heart, you can reuse Water Enchantress. So I guess one thing I'm going to go over is like I'm going to show my side deck and I'm going to explain, uh, I'm going to like mention uh, things that I've encountered at my locals while playing this strategy. Um, So my side deck of choice for yesterday's local event was as follows. It was triple dimension shifter, triple troll and lockbird, triple cosmic cyclone, triple book of eclipse, and three evenly mashed. Um, as I mentioned beforehand, um, in the previous videos, we're in a very open format still. We are, uh, like, as we have meta strategies that are being, like, uh, brought up and are pretty much locked into being popular this format, but we don't have a definitive, like, scope of what are the top contenders in the format just yet. That being said, um, I pretty much catered my side deck for popular strategies that I was expecting to see or face. Um, I'll start with Droll and Shifter. Um, so the thing about this format is there you will encounter very heavy combo decks uh combo decks that like expedite the process with both searching and like graveyard uh 
like inter integration. Um, the best examples I can give of right now are Despia branded. Um, so Despia branded, Mikanko Libromancer, Dark Worlds, other strategies that involve the adventure engine and strategies that involve the punk engine. All of those strategies are going to see play more than not until the meta is defined that they're not. Um, and these cards make it so you can blow them out if they tr and, 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 and stop their strategy. Um, similarly to all those decks, Droll in particular hurts uh, also my deck. It also hurts Kerglaus a lot. Um, people think that this card is not that good against Kashtira, but the thing about it is on not experienced Kashtira players are not gonna play around this card. Which means it's going to be awkward for them trying to push through their strategies if they start if they start their plays with just like a pressured planet or Kashtira Unicorn. Um I don't think I need to explain how powerful Shifter is. Um, with Kashtiras being more popular in the format and Tiramans being l gonna be way less of a dominant force as it, like it was in the previous format, um, I feel like Dimension Shifter is not going to be as popular. You will encounter decks that like pretty much don't fall to this card at all. Uh, Sword Soul and Kashtira are prime examples. Um, that being said, this is still a very powerful card, and if you do have a space in your side deck for this card, you are pretty much going to run it. Um, you're probably wondering, how, how can you play with Shifter with your Kashtira cards? I mean, Scareclaw cards? Um, the way you do it is that you make boards that pretty much guarantee you the follow-up, but do not uh, waste your engine resources as much. Pretty much similar to what I did with the Visa Star Frost line. Uh, evenly mashed and cosmic. Um, I'll speak of both in the same pattern. Um, Labyrinth is one strategy that you will probably find and if it and trap tricks are coming out uh the structure deck is coming out in a couple weeks so expect trap decks to appear in the format more than not um there's also eldritch and there's also uh, true dracos and other like miscellaneous more roguish trap 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 strategies but you will encounter them another outlier they have not mentioned yet and you will see it because it is very popular in this format is runic um you need a game plan for runic uh, if you don't like that deck is probably going to be a problem against uh, for you um and having as much removal for their cards is very key the last card i guess i'll explain uh talk about is book of eclipse um, as you probably have seen, Book of Eclipse is a very, very popular card, not both in main and side decks this format. The number one reason for it is, like, it's both a defensive and offensive card. Uh, it shuts down very key strategies, uh, and it's a pretty much a win condition against Kashtira. If you're going to play the game against them, because they that deck does not put up omni negates as its own archetype, um, more than as his uh, as an engine. Um, that being said, um, my local experience with this card is I haven't drawn it or needed it yet. Um, and another thing about Book of Eclipse that I have to mention. And you've probably already seen it in other videos. 
uh, if they nightmare ibly lock you and you don't have ways to get to our face of star frost then you can book ibly with book of eclipse um which makes it so you can keep playing the game um but yeah um this has been like a strategy talk um part of the video um I guess I'll uh, mention the decks I faced already. Um, so far uh, on locals, yesterday I faced Sprite, um, Kashtira, Vanda Despia, True Draco, and Dark Worlds. Um, the hardest one by far, I would probably say it was Dark Worlds. Um, their main reason for that is because, um, uh, even though, uh, they, so they want the die roll and what, when it comes to dark worlds, you need to be very, very careful because, um, it kind of feels like an FDK deck. It's one of those deck strategies that if you do not stop them turn one, they will probably make something degenerate and try to stop your plays um so game one i uh, lost the roll and he pretty much pressured me he his end board was graph of fusion muckcracker um the dark barrier statue which really doesn't hurt this deck too much because you do have access to lightheart which is a dark monster and you can grab reichheart which is also a dark monster but the problem with that is that even though you do have the answers to it, the barrier statue also has protection from Muckcracker and Grafa makes it more annoying for you to get rid of that board without enough board breakers uh, or hard negations like Dark World or no more, which I do not run in this deck. Um, like, I mean, I run Book of Eclipse, but that's pretty much it. Um, I ended up winning uh, that match because uh, Droll and Dimension Shifter played as big outliers when I went second game of three. On game one, uh, you pretty much have a really solid matchup against them because of the existence of Kashtira Arise Heart. Um, but yeah. That is all for now. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. Um, hope you understand and learned anything from it. Um, and stay tuned. I'm going to do another deck profile of another strategy that I think is solid for the format. That one is going to have be way more intricate and it's going to have way more explanations. So. If you do enjoy your rambling, you're in for a long one. Um, that being said, uh, press like. Hope you enjoyed the video. And yeah, uh, keep enjoying this format.